drink beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we'll be looking at Kegland's new Hop Bong products that offer a range of uses and are available in two different sizes. So let's get started. Here are the two different sizes of Hop Bong. These come in at 2 inch and 1.5 inch so that they can suit a range of different products without the need for size conversion pieces like this one. Alternatively if you have the need you may want to use a converter with a single Hop Bong for access to a range of different activities within a range of different products. So as such these are very multi-purpose and adaptable too. The hot bongs are made from nylon 12 which is an engineering plastic that is extremely robust and chemically resistant. They are also suitable for autoclave use too which spells out very strongly how resistant they are to high pressures and temperatures. Let's now go through the setup and parts needed for each way that you can use these. Some homebrew stores will sell the hot bong with different packages so that you can simply buy what is needed in one package for each use. But if you intend to use yours for more than one use, then you may choose to simply buy one package and then add on some extra parts to cover your uses rather than buying multiple hot bongs and packages. This guide has been made with all of this in mind. There is a clue in the hot bong's name as to its first use which is for hops, the first example being as a way to add dry hops from the top of a fermenter. Firstly at the very top of the hot bong you will need a pressure release valve and this is connected to the hot bong via this polyketone end cap. You then add your seal and this is then tri-clamped to the top of the hot bong. Shown on screen now are the extra parts needed here with their Keglan part numbers and descriptions. We can then add a carbonation cap here which will be where we add in our CO2 and using the pressure release valve we added earlier we can purge our oxygen so that when we add our hops to our fermenter this is done without adding in any oxygen because this can lead to beer spoilage. The cap I am using here is the yellow version but you could just as easily use the red variety. It's totally up to you as they will both work. From here we then need to add a butterfly valve. Kegland offer these in three different triclamp sizes as shown on screen now along with with their respective part numbers. So depending on your use will depend on the one that you use here and naturally the valve is simply open to release your hops. The butterfly valve that you see me using here is the 2 inch to 2 inch version and this is ideally suited to this new lid which is made for Firmzilla. This new type of Firmzilla lid is suitable for the whole range of Firmzillas. You will find it sold as part of the package now shown on screen. This lid is then connected by using another seal and tri -camp. You can add 150 to 180 grams of hops with the 2 inch hop bong or between 80 to 120 grams with the 1.5 inch hop bong per session. But naturally if you want to add more you can simply repeat the process as many times as you like. Staying with the theme of hops the hop bong can also be used as a hop randall in the configuration that you see here. This will allow you to run finished beer through hops straight into your beer glass to further infuse hop flavour that is of course ultra fresh. Naturally you could also use this to infuse other ingredients in too so this has plenty of scope. The way this works is that this randall will sit between your keg and whatever you are using as a beer tap. On the keg end you will need a ball lock jumper cable like this one which is short for the purpose of this video but your hosing should be cut to whatever length you need for your situation. As shown the jumper connects to your randall here and then the other end will connect to your keg. Then at the top of the randall as shown here you will connect your serving line ball lock which will allow serving through your beer tap. Let's now run through what this comprises of. At the very bottom here we have a tri-clamp blank along with a tri-clamp and a silicon seal. Then we have a ball lock carbonation cap. At the top of this randall this may look very familiar but instead of a silicon seal we actually have one of these filters so that our hop matter or other infusing ingredients do not end up in our beer when poured. Here is the list of the accessories for the hot bong that are needed for a randall which I have specified here in 2 inch sizing but naturally you may wish to use the 1.5 inch version and then there will be some parts that you will need to change to suit this smaller version. Let's now look at inline uses and here you can see a baseline setup. Firstly this can be used as an inline carbonator. Again if you use a ball lock jumper at this end you can connect to a keg. Then from the yellow middle ball lock you can add in your CO2 up to a massive 10 bars of pressure which is 145 psi. At the end of this ball lock I have a diffusion stone which will help the CO2 on its way into our beer. You would then connect your serving hose to the far left end ball lock for dispensing from a beer tap. 
This is a great way of serving beer early and will work best if the inline carbonate is within your fridge so that the CO2 can be quickly absorbed. I would suggest experimenting with different pressure levels here which will vary depending on the temperature in your fridge and the amount of time that you have spent carbonating each serving. You can also use this same setup for inline oxygenation which would involve transfer of your wort from your brewing system into the hot bong via this ball lock. You would then have your oxygen coming into this boil dock via the diffusion stone. Then you would hook up this end so that the end wort goes into your fermenter. Do not worry if your fermenter does not have a ball lock for entry, you can simply splash it in for further effect. If you wanted to do some low level filtering then you could add in the filter that I showed earlier, just be ready to have to change this if you get too much build up of solids during transfer. Here is a list of additional parts used in these inline setups. I will also include all of these part lists in this video's description, which is found between the video and the comment section on YouTube. I am sure that the hop on could see itself being put to work with more uses than those that I've covered in this video, but I feel that I have illustrated some core uses to set you on your way. Once again, Kegland have come up with a multi-use product that will not break the bank, which is also welcome into the homebrewing market, perhaps a little more welcome than usual in recent times. It is also very nice to see that Kegland are also releasing products like this that can be used with a good range of different equipment rather than just their own. I find this rather refreshing compared to the approach of many other manufacturers in this industry who seem to just focus on their own products the whole time. After all, this is a great way of adding more functionality for homebrewers and allows them to advance their processes further. Even if you just have one use for this product now, I feel that it will represent very good value, especially when you consider that it could be serving you in other ways into the future too. Perhaps you will be that homebrewer who buys this purely for use as a solution to oxygen-free dry hopping, and then just because you can, you will try using it as a hop brandle and will love the extra fresh hoppy effect and will bring it into your serving for hoppy styles into the future. During 2022, Kegland have been gradually expanding their range of tri-clamp compatible products and I am a big fan of these fittings myself, so I am very much in favour of this. This also includes the new triclonical firmzilla, which will be available in areas outside of Australia quite soon. I have already had quite a bit of experience with this new product and will have my overview and first impressions coming to this channel in the near future too. 2022 has certainly been Kegland's best product release year yet, and there is still even more to come. Personally, I am now looking forward to the new stainless steel firm Zilla. There is plenty of room in the European market and beyond for a well-priced pressure fermenter and unit tank that goes beyond the kegmenter. Do let myself and the community know what you think about all of this in the comments section of this video. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!